So as you're all probably aware by now, the plan is, in the bottom of my compound here, to bore a hole, plain diameter hole that will accept yeah, basically that new plate, which is going to be bolted onto there. Now of course the problem is, if I've got this plate here, the bottom part of my cross light, or compound slide I should say, up on my face plate, forward jaw, however I might mean to do it, I won't have a tool post to use, or a compound to use on the lathe, while I'm machining it. So how am I going to machine it? Now in an ideal world, I'd have a next door neighbour with a Walco w uh, WM180, and I'd say, can I borrow your compound for a day? But, you know, life isn't like that, so you always have to find another way. So, I'll set up my plan. It's probably easier to see what I'm doing rather than me try to explain it. While I was at it, I thought I'd just as well bolt that on there just to try it out. And it does still spin, as I thought. And if I pull it up as hard as I can and measure the step, I'm getting 7.27, which is fine. What it means is that my minimum hole size, obviously, depth, if this is right up, I don't want this fouling on the back of my ball because I want it to pull down on the bottom base. So as long as I'm, yeah, just seven and a half mil, we'll go for a nominal seven and a half. Gives about a tenth out clearance when it's pulled right up between that face and the underside. Let's put my milling slide on. Again, it's got the same double hole and two holes as the little plate I just made. Just line those up. Spinning round, put the three bolts in. The hole there somewhere, there it is. Can you see the plan yet? Well, the plan is... I wonder, one way or another, I'm going to fit up my boring bar in the compound. It might be that way round, it might be that way round, it might be that way round, we'll see. But I'm going to fit my boring bar up in it. And the plan is... that my milling slide will become a tool holder, my tool post. And again, thinking on it even deeper, the two holes in the milling slide, now I'm looking at it, I may come up with an even more cunning plan. Because I want it to be back here in the normal sort of position where a tool post would be. Let me just undo the two bolts that hold on the milling slide. Come on, off you go. And take the milling slide off its subplate. When I built the milling slide, what I did was something very similar again. That's a tapered plate, very like the one that's going to go upside down on top of here. But these three holes here are identical to the plate there. So I could bolt this directly on where the tool post goes. And then it's pretty much back in a conventional sort of position for the tool post. I only thought of that as we were going along. I just remembered that uh, I matched the three up. So let's just pop that back off again. And I think I got a bit of dirt in that back thread. I mean, need to clean that out. I always mean to put a bolt in the hole when I finished with it, but uh, I never remember and it fills with a bit of swarf. I did dig it out. But uh, a little grub screw or something like that in there would probably be the best bet. So we'll just pull those back. Right, oops. Don't want those. Let's put their bolts back in the, uh, in the key poles in the side so that I don't lose them for next time because they are a funny length. Here we go. I drilled and tapped a few holes in the side of this uh, plate. Oh, and as you can see, that's the tapered plug that 
close the milling slide down. Very similar, it's below surface and when I bolt the milling slide down it can't turn. If I loosen the bolts it can revolve. And a moment of truth time is that should sit on there and those two bolts should exactly like the oh I need to bring it up a little bit it's hanging out below bottom there we go and again it's got a six mil hole in the middle for a six mil dowel got something dirty under there I don't know it'll go down on that tile tile now yeah it feels a bit weird I'm oh, sorry I just haven't pulled it down yet And more luck than judgment, my milling slide. Oops, is now my tool post. If I four jaw up, job in the four jaw, rig something up in here to put the boring bar in. Should be simple enough, and go for it. So I've just set it up in the four jaw. As you can see, I've used a bit of aluminium packing because I'm actually clamping around the dovetail areas on the sides, but that's just the way it's worked out. It does fit in my four jaw. None of the jaws are sticking out too far. I mean, I'd rather these be in a bit more, but hey ho. Um, right, so wind it round. Where's the high point? There. It's very loose at the moment. Tighten up on the high point. Go round to the low point. Just give that a little a bit less. Back to the high point. Be getting somewhere near now. High point there. High point on these two. Starting to just crush that aluminium into shape now. High point. Low point. Let's see if I can just. And obviously, I pushed the dowel. Puffed, <laughs> pushed, popped, <laughs> puffed. Okay, I've popped a dowel into the end of there. That's the 6mm dowel I was using, into the 6mm dowel hole in the bottom, and I'm clocking up so I'm centre about on the centre of the dowel hole, as it would have been originally. So, very nearly there now. To the high point there. Oops. Just go around these four drawers, just making sure. Yeah, I'll probably tighten that one a bit. Oh, right, okay, getting a bit of give on the aluminium was it squeezing in right? Okay, it's just it didn't move. Before I go any further, I'm just going to clock the face of it. I wonder if I can get in there somewhere. Where will my magnet fit? Something like that. Okay, I'm within, so I thow on the face. Not too worried about that. Go back to the dowel now, because that would have altered the uh, dowel a little. Where can I put you so you can see the clock again? Oops. 
<laughs> Excuse me, getting into shot here a second. Right, where are we? All right, let's just bring this finally back in. High pump there. Let's just take a bit off that one. Ooh, we're so close now. Just check these side ones. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of that is my hand influencing the... Uh, I haven't plugged the lathe back in. <laughs> I unplugged the lathe to plug the drill in. So, okay, we do have a better sound. Oh, it's there. Couple of tenths there, I reckon. Let's see if I can get him a bit, bit better. That's the very spot. Yeah, this, you're, you're talking around the half of the home mark there. So happy days. Pop that dowel back out and let's go setting up a boring bar on centre somehow. So I've got the boring bar in one of my tool holders, uh, one of my ones that I haven't dedicated for anything yet, on top of a parallel, rough old piece of steel, but it's flat enough, um, and clamped down in my adjustable slide. So to set the height, or the centre height, I mean it is roughly anyway, I, I picked an appropriate sized piece of metal, and I can just wind the slide up or down to get the right height. So we'll do that now. So I'll just have a little tinker with this, other way. touch more I think would help if I undid the locking screws a bit on the side it's a very small hand wheel this I think looking at the dowel hole I'm somewhere near there we'll, we'll give it a whirl anyway it's extremely difficult for me to give you a good view of this there's a tool post or <laughs> getting side is uh, right in the way from pretty much every direction and I'm just roughing it out it's about it's got to be 39 and a half mil finished and that outer ring you can see there that's me giving a little witness mark at uh, at about 37 and just taking the meat out of this Just being gentle. Don't want to go too mad. And we're going to go to seven and a half mil deep. We'll bring you back when we're somewhere near. So that's seven and a half deep. Cracking out the bottom. So we get now. Not sure on the damper. Give me 39.1. So if I do point to a side, it should be something near. Let me just double check this. What diameter it is my plug? 39.36. Yeah.
cut. This should be. The diameter I'm looking for. Okay. Let's cast this so I will be giving it all a good clean afterwards. Let's have a little... What can I hold that with? Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Just holding on a pin of some description. I don't fit in there. Where am I going wrong? Very narrow face that I'm trying to... Uh, 39.37 Ah, okay 39.3 <laughs> A bit more of a cut Another point one aside Yep That should be my finishing cut Always better to try it first, I suppose, and have it too big. And I don't want it a tight fit in there. I'm thinking about six out. Three and something like that. That's how it's going to sit, and the grub screws are going to come in from the sides here with their little plugs. Lovely. Just need to break that edge now. How am I going to do that? Wonder if I can uh, slew this tool around and do it on the back face, maybe. <laughs> Not without fouling it. How am I going to do that? Let's have a look. Uh, I am going to dress it on there with a file. So we pulled it back out the lathe. I've cleaned all the cast iron off the lathe. Well, certainly off the bedways and everything that's important. It's still in the tray there, and I will clear that up. I've marked out the centre line, described the very fine line, marked out a line 4 mil up from the base, so that I can put an M6 grub screw in there, and I'll still have one millimetres of wall, or half a millimetre. Will I have four mil up? I will have a mil of wall, so I'm happy with that, yeah. And I'm just going to pick up a very small centre drill, pick up on that centre pop that I put in, and I was very careful with the centre pop. And just give myself a little centre drill marker here for the drill to follow. There we are. That's the one side. Same on the other side. Pick up on the centre drill or the centre pop. Happy days. A little bit more. Okay, so next up, I'm going to tap them N6. So I need to drill the hole. Now, 
display build real bit. Ready for tapping and kick. Okay, so as I break through. Happy days. Flick him over. Same the other side. Picked up that centre drill accurately. And again, drill it through with the 5mm. Right through the other side. So we'll have a little chamfer on both of those. Because they're going to get tapped. I'll probably chamfer them again after I've tapped them. It depends on whether I shampoo it deep enough this time, I suppose. So, shampoo there. And a shampoo there. Nice and straight. So I need to machine a couple of little brass followers that will drop down through those holes um, with an angle on the end, 30 degree angle on them, that the 6mm grub screws can push against. However, I still haven't got a tool post on here and I don't want to just use the grub screws temporarily because I don't want to mark up the outside of this. So I have a cunning plan and it, it just came to me as a flash of inspiration that if I remove those two screws, I can put that on top and use the existing screws and still be using it in exactly the same method that it's always been. So, let's give that a whirl. So I'll just pop those off. They take a bit of doing because I can't hold this too well. But There we go. Just Once I get them cracked, it's fine. it rotates it's hard to uh, tighten them up but I, I've just got to cant it at an angle and I can grip it just enough to tighten the screws so we'll have those two over there put them safely to one side and if I just place that on top I should be able to fit the existing original setup down through the holes in what's now a clearance plate Pick up the plate underneath with the tapped holes, and that is now exactly how it was originally. Okay, so it means I got a tool post to use in the meantime while I'm making the little screws. Happy days! I'll put all that back together, and we'll make these little brass bushes. I'll just face the end. I think this is quarter. <laughs> we'll find out in a minute. I'll treat it as if it's six mil. Just touch off there. Go half mil aside, see what it ends up as. So that's a lot. Also got to fit down the uh, five mil root hole inside the M6 and I want to keep as much grub screw as I can so I'm going to make these just sort of four or five mil long and I'll file uh, a 45 on the end of them or a 30 I should say is the angle to match up with the uh, the follower there Let's just have a quick measure of that. Where are we? We won't be doing it in Imperial. 5.17. I'm probably going to go for about a 4.9, but... Uh, 
5.17 so we're probably about 0.1 a side should be somewhere near Should be five mil on the nail, I would have thought. Yeah, probably do with a little scratch off it, just a tiny bit. I zero two that one. Probably could have polished this up. Okay. So. I'm going to part it off to approximate length. I can just dress the back edge with a file afterwards. And then I can hold it in a little uh, little vise and file an angle on afterwards. So let's part it off. A um, little high speed steel parting tool or what to do, what to do. I just well hacksaw that off and I and file it flat afterwards. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's have a little line. What should we say? Four and a half. Yeah. Four and a half. Give myself a little line. Hacks on off my Junior hacksaw might be the tool of choice for that. If I could find my junior hacksaw, there it is. Really little bugger this is going to be. one and I want another one of those so I'll just face it again for another line of four and a half there we go uh, got the line on zero on the DRO and four and a half again up in a little line and saw it off a leg. Dress that back edge flat. Oh, I've already got a flat edge. Dress a 30 degree where I've just sawn that off. Should have sawn them off at 30 degrees, really, shouldn't I? If I'd have sawn them off at like 30 degrees, I would have saved a bit of filing. Never mind. Well, that was a fiddly little blighter to file, but as you can see, two little slugs, brass slugs, filed to, yeah, approximately the angle. I've, it's not quite in. Approximately the angle might have to play with this one a little bit. I can see a bit of daylight through there on the camera So I couldn't see with my eyes and uh, We'll give it a whirl So we'll put the correct screws back in Where are you? It's one of them There's the second one Tighten those up. <clears throat> right. Um, we can drop that onto there. Well, that could be one forward now. It's all over balance at the moment.
just wind that right forward. Hold on. Back into somewhere near. Perhaps I should have fitted the base before I fitted the lid. Yeah, let's pull this back off again and I'll fit the base first. Oh, a bit of jiggery and pokery. So I just need to push that. <laughs> Easier said than done. Okay, maybe it'll better just to get it started this way. There we go. It does pop in the hole. And if I just... Uh, put my grub screw, I might put normal other bolts in this instead of grub screws, there's no reason why there shouldn't be nuts on the outside I'll just wind that through oh, until that brass needs to rotate into the right orientation whether well, you can pick that up let's bring him out a bit I just need to rotate that the right way that's it so the high side should be facing the complete opposite direction of the way I've just put it shall we try that again Hold on, the bit that sticks out the most is going to be closer to this top surface. Yes. So, let's just pop that little plug in there. Oh, it's going to be easier from the outside. Eh, nobody said it was going to be easy. Just there, no more, no less. I'll do the same on the other one. Where are you? That way up. They should rotate into position with a bit of force on them anyway. And I start them just where you want them to start with, I suppose. Well, that one was a lot easier. And bring him out until he's just about there. Okay. That way. Uh, Allen key. Get the right Allen key. I think it's that one. It's not that one. <laughs> oh, hello. I've just been visited by a wasp. Ooh. I can see him buzzing around here. Here we go. That's actually... As it was screwing in, it became tight. I eased off. Give it a turn. When tight, I eased off. Give it a turn. And it's actually gone in to the correct orientation. So let's see if I can get the other one. I think I might have got this one first time. Well, what can we see, folks? What I can see already is that when I tighten that screw, and if I tighten that screw, We're locked. I think we have some degree of success. I think I will stick with these grub screws. And I probably need to shorten them both by, yeah, six mil. We won't have them down in. But I will shorten them both by six mil, I think. 
So, I have more grab screws. I'll put my compound back together. And I'll get another two grub screws and knock six mil off the end of them. Got a full thing, grub screws. Just whipping six mil off the end. My grub screws will be stuck out the uh, stuck out just a couple of mil. Once I've done the two of these, I'll swap them out for the two I'm using at the moment, the long ones. And that'll pretty much be the job complete. I'll just pop that out a touch more. I basically had six and a half mil sticking out the chuck and facing down to half mil from the chuck. Turn off the leading edge of it. So we'll do the other one and we're ready to fit them. So there it is. They're now easily adjustable angles on my compound slide. I'm actually pleased as punch with how this one came out. You know, it really was, um, it exceeded my expectations and it all went very well. So yeah, very pleased about that. And I think it's a great little mod that can be done by not so much a beginner, I wouldn't have thought, but you know, with a, you know, I'm sure if they follow through the way I did things, it could be done by a beginner. You'll probably notice that the first episode of this, I called it beginner's improvement to the compound slide. Having to use the milling slide to hold the boring bar or all that, maybe not so much down the street for beginners. But uh, yeah, I suppose if, they, if they've if they got a milling slide and they've watched how we did it, there's always a way around it, you know. So it could be done by beginners, depending on the level of competency, I suppose. But I hope you've enjoyed it, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you to all the new subscribers for some subscribing. And thanks for watching again. <laughs>